So we took my four-year-old son to Calvary Fellowship, Malik Terrace over in Seattle on our way to the hospital, to Children's Hospital. And we got up at like three in the morning. <laughs> this was really hard to do, right? But we got to Calvary Fellowship where my friend Wayne Taylor and some of his elders were there. And we got to go into their elders meeting at super early, like 6.30 in the morning. They were all there. They got some anointing oil and they placed it on my son's leg. He has a, one, one leg was deformed. It was shorter than the other. And they prayed for him. And then later we were at the hospital and Dr. Mosca, our doctor, had the two computer screens up with, you know, the both images of the x-rays. And my son was supposed to get a new hip socket because his hip socket was shallow. It was like this, not like that, like it should be. Well, he said, I don't know what happened. You guys got a freebie, but this, you know, I've seen hundreds of cases like this with your son, and I've never seen this before. He he has a hip socket now. The before x-ray showed no hip socket. The after showed one, no surgery. God still does stuff like that, you guys. It was amazing. Now, we don't want to get all focused in and stuck on, you know, name it and claim it. If you have faith, then God will heal you no matter what. No, but you can ask. Like the book of James says, ask, you can ask. He might do it for you. He may not. He has his reasons. And we don't understand all that stuff. But the main thing is, is you want to turn people when you pray for healing. I've seen a lot of healings. I'll talk about some more stories of some real things that happened in my life. But when it when you do pray for someone for healing, you want to put the focus on Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, give him the glory every time you're talking to him, you're you're asking him to do it, and you make sure others know that. <laughs> so, all right. So we're going to talk about prayer, healing for prayer in this video, and I'm so excited about it, you guys. This is going to be a great video. I've got some great stories for you and some scripture, so we're going to get into it right now. All right, here we are. Luke, so, so there's a whole bunch, I did, I did a search, so there's a whole bunch of scripture about healing, but let's go into Luke here where Jesus himself says, now while the sun was setting, all those who had any, who were sick with various diseases brought them to him and he was laying his hands on each one of them and healing them. Who was? Jesus. They were bringing people to who? Jesus. You keep the focus on Jesus on Yeshua, if you're in Israel. All right. Most important thing right there. So one day, here's Luke chapter five, verse 17. One day he was teaching and there were some Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from, from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. I'll bet they did. <laughs> and, and the power of the Lord was present for him to perform healing. There it is again, Jesus doing the healing. He's, he's the one who always does it. And all the people were trying to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Isn't that beautiful, you guys? He's the healer, you guys. He heals. And, and the Holy Spirit heals too, but he, the Holy Spirit, he always points everybody to Jesus. He points everyone to Jesus, not to himself. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to perform healing. So he sent the disciples out to do the same. So you and I, we are disciples of Jesus. If you're a follower of him, we can do the same. It can happen sometimes. We don't want to get stuck on that and obsessed with it, but it can happen, you guys. It's happened in my life. And as they were leaving, they began going throughout the villages, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. What were they doing? Preaching the good news about Yeshua, about Jesus, the good news. And they were healing, right? In that order. So... But the crowds, here's another one in Luke chapter 9, verse 11. But the crowds were aware of this and followed him, and he welcomed them. Jesus welcomed them and began speaking to them about the kingdom of God and curing those who had need of healing. Wow. <laughs> so this is so amazing, you guys. Now, it's so important we give God the glory whenever healing happens. So, so important. There was another time where my son's leg was stuck at 40 degrees. So it was like, it was like right about 40 degrees at the knee and it wouldn't bend anymore. 
And they, the doctors even put him under. They had a whole team of these strong young doctors that were trying to pry him while he was under this in the surgery room, and it wouldn't budge. So the doctor came back to our room, and she said to my wife and I, it was really depressing. She says, I just have bad news for you. This is science. It's just the way things are going to be. You're going to have to live with it. Your son's leg will be stuck at 40 degrees for the rest of his life. That's just how it's going to be. Well, that hit my wife and I hard. I mean, tears shed, all those things. So they sent my son to go down to physical therapy anyway. They just, it was just routine. He goes down there. We went up to the, to the cafeteria, got some coffee in the hospital, the children's hospital there. And I just looked at my wife and I, I didn't really want to pray. (laughs) I was pretty down too. And so, so was she. I didn't really even want to pray, but I just said, honey, let's, let's just pray. You know, my wife was like, well, what's the use? But we we prayed and there was something that happened in that prayer. I could just, you could get that sense. You just knew something happened. And I told my wife, something happened. I think Jesus healed him. And it, nothing weird, you know, none of this like following people around saying, hey, I can heal you of that. You know, none of these weird kinds of things. This is just real healing from Jesus, from a prayer, from asking him. So anyway, Five minutes later, we walk downstairs. We go to the physical therapy room. As soon as we walked in, the physical therapist says, hey, Louie's got something to tell you guys. And Louie, my little son, you know, he was really cute back then. He was like five or something. He's like, yeah, dad, mom, dad, guess what? Uh, It just went. My leg, it just went. And I was like, oh, my gosh, thank you, Jesus. And And then I said, when was that? And she said, oh, I don't know. It was like five minutes ago. It just went, just loosened right up. And I said, that's when we prayed. And they know we're believers there. They, Dr. Musk, all these different people, they all know. And they see miracles in these hospitals. But it's kind of taboo for doctors and the staff there to talk about Jesus healing somebody. Um, they stick with science. and They don't want to be ostracized in the hospital. Who cares? Don't worry about that. But Jesus gets the glory because he healed our son again. Amazing, you guys. There was another time, uh, there was a really good friend of mine named Fritz Hooker. He was just, it's kind of a funny last name, right? But you know, I live here in Washington. Is in, um, He was just such a great guy. He worked with us at where I work as a contractor. He, I mean, the guy would jump in the ditch and, you know, we worked in water lines, fixing, repairing water lines and things like that. He would jump in there and grab your shovel and, and shovel right next to you and he was just such a hard worker. So he was like 86 years old when he worked with me. Well, at that same time, we were going to a, this church called IBC, Independent Bible Church. And we just went there with them because they invited us. And we're sitting in the back of the same pew as they were. And at the end of the message, they always played How Great Is Our God, that song. And while the, the preacher was just winding down and there's, we're singing How Great Is Our God, I looked over and I saw Fritz and his eyes were completely rolled back. His head was back. He looked pale, gray. He looked dead. I don't know if he was or not, but he was out. And I just didn't know what to do. I said, Lord, what do I do? And he, I, hear, I could hear his voice just say, you grab his hand. So I, I grabbed Fritz's hand. And as soon as I did, he warmed up and his hand was cold. He warmed right up. And people were already noticing, calling 911, all that stuff. A nurse in front of us was holding his head. All these weird things were going on. And I grabbed his hand. He warmed up and he looked at me and he smiled. And he said, hey, Buckshot. That's what he called me. Hey, Buckshot. He pulled the Snickers candy bar out of his coat pocket and handed it to me. How about a candy bar? And he had a big smile on his face. He didn't even know what happened. And the paramedics came down. They're like, Fred, you got to get in the stretcher. Let's go. We're going to take you in. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm not going anywhere. I feel great. And his wife was telling him to go. And I didn't say anything, but it was a little miracle that Jesus did, that God did. I didn't do it. I just obeyed and listened to his voice and prayed for him. And God did the work. Isn't that amazing, you guys, how, how good God is? He did that. And I'm not bragging by any means. I'm not one of those kinds of people. In fact, this is like, I don't share this much with others because they just kind of think it's weird. So I don't really share it, but I'm going to share it with you guys because I want you to know how to pray how to pray for healing. I think it's important. And uh, the key to praying is even if you don't feel like it, you can ask God for healing. He may or may not do it. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he does a partial healing and sometimes a whole healing. 
sometimes nothing, but that, that's up to him. He's God, you're not. But you can ask. It's okay to ask. If you don't ask, it may not happen, right? But the other thing is to stay humble, okay? Stay humble and listen to his voice. If he prompts you to, to do something, do it. Nothing weird, right? And always, 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 my friend, give the glory to God. Every time there's a healing in the Bible by a, a you know one of the, the heroes of the Bible, they're always giving glory to God when something like that happens, always. So it's kind of like in, in, in Acts. Remember in Acts, um, Peter and John, they see this man who was paralyzed for 40 years and and uh, Peter said, he, he was begging for coins. And Peter said, I can't, I don't have any money for you, no gold for you. But what I do have is healing for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he gives Jesus, right away gives Jesus the credit. And the man was healed. And he was rejoicing and following them around as they went to Solomon's porch over to the north uh, east corner there in that outer courtyard. And he was rejoicing and he was happy and the Pharisees were upset but Peter made sure he gave the credit and the glory and the honor to Jesus Christ. That's the key, you guys. All right? Hey, I love you guys. God bless you. I hope this episode helps you. And feel free to comment below about stories you have of healing that God did for you or a loved one or any stories you have like that. I'd love to hear it. I love you guys.